Hi, I'm Simon Lee, Director of the Citizenship and Governance Strategic Research Area. And in these chats on just society, there's no bigger question than voting in a general election. That's the essence of citizenship and governance. So I'm very pleased today to be able to talk to Robert Herring, a colleague of mine in the law school, who's an expert in blockchain technology and thinking ahead about how the law and society needs to consider these developments? Could they make for a fair election? And, and Robert, wh why, why do we have secret ballots anyway? Or why can't I just walk in and vote without seeming to have to give identity? What's going on here? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, if you hadn't noticed, we have got general election coming up in a week's time. Um, so, the, yeah, one of these key questions really is, is that you get sent through this piece of paper which says that you have to go and vote, telling you where to go and vote. On the day you go along um, and you essentially give your name and uh, your postcode, you don't even really have to show this piece of paper that you've been sent through. So, yeah, the question is, how does the person who is ticking your name off the list know that you are who you say you are? Um, and therefore, what does that really mean in terms of the validity, validity of your vote and, and sort of the ramifications that that has for kind of the democratic process in general? So, I mean, for a long time, identity has obviously been a key aspect of, um, of elections. Um, and, you know, going back to sort of 19th century and before, um, elections tended to be held in these sort of large public forums where people um, were kind of asked to, to say who they were going to vote for and they right, would so, have so to... So that would be intimidating? Oh, well, well, yeah, there was certainly the, there was, there was scope for intimidation there if you were stood in a, in a sort of a public square yelling out who you were going to vote for. Um, there was uh, any chance that there could be someone sort of hanging around who, who wanted to try and influence you to say something else. Right. Um, so one of the big reforms that came in towards the end of the 19th century was actually to inaugurate kind of uh, into legislation um, around elections the importance of actually of secrecy, right. of being able to vote in secret to be able to um, not even have you know, your family members or, or anyone really know, um, or kind of close friends. Yeah. The idea was that you could, you could do this completely in private. Um, but obviously the payoff for that is that then we start to kind of have issues with, with identification of evidence. Yeah. very secretive. Who do we know? Uh, and do we have a problem in, in the United Kingdom with fraud or... It's called personation, isn't it? When so, yeah, so personation is, is one of many offences um, that, that are sort of highlighted and, and come through uh, the various pieces of legislation. So we have the Representation of the People Act um, and the, the sort of Election Administration Act uh, more recently, which has developed even more uh, sort of, uh, of the offences which, which are seen as problematic. But in truth, there is no real problem with, with electoral fraud in this country. It's a very uh, sort of minuscule percentage um, and, and, yet, and yet, yeah, in the Conservative Party manifesto, they're talking about trying to make it fairer and, in a sense, more modern. Um, well, yeah. So the Conservative Party manifesto for this forthcoming uh, election has picked up on um, a particular recommendation that was made by Sir Eric Pickles, who was a former cabinet minister in the Conservative Party, in a report that he wrote at the end of last year, which mm -hmm. was called "Securing the Ballot," um, and he. Uh, an, amongst a number of recommendations pointed towards the importance of strengthening uh, the security um, of the electoral process by uh, essentially having um, more robust forms of identification. So we start to kind of get back into this sort of the area of, of photo ID. Right. Um, so, you know, when you to kind of go back to what we were saying earlier, when you go into the polling station, and you're asked to give your name and, and your postcode if you don't have a polling card. Um, the sort of uh, context that the, the kind of Conservative Party manifesto and, and Eric Pickles are, are pointing towards is that you would actually have to show a picture of yourself right. uh, in, in order to kind of, for the person there to see that you are the person. That so you could we vote that. online, a bit like with your bio passport mm -hmm. going into some sort of booth and would that, would that work? Is the technology there to make that happen? Yeah, so the technology is, is, is most certainly there um, for, for what is essentially called either e-voting or i-voting. Right. So e-voting um, is, is when we have polling stations much like we have now, but they contain electronic voting machines. Um, so we're seeing this in America. 
uh, certainly, I mean, you might have seen a number of the sort of uh, around um, some of Obama's uh, um, re-election. Yeah. He was sort of, there were sort of press shots of him going into into the uh, um, polling stations and using these, these electronic voting uh, uh, machines. And yeah, and, the, and in that you, you're essentially, you're, it's, it's a kind of an ele- sort of electronic yeah. version of, of, of the kind of the paper um, voting system. So it's not, it's sophisticated in the sense that it can kind of compile the votes and, and deal with them um, in, in a sort of a slightly more sophisticated way. But it's not really developing um, or, or solving a number of the problems necessarily around. So can terrorists hack into that? Uh, yes, yeah, so the, exactly. So, uh, you know, with, with either e-voting or i-voting, i-voting is something which is, is sort of, um, hasn't been explored quite so widely, but that's essentially when you're voting from home, so online or via perhaps a, a mobile app or something along these lines. Um, Estonia is, is a country which is, has really committed themselves um, to looking at all of these sort of different ways um, of, of being able to vote. Um, but in that country, they, um, all the citizens are issued with an identity card. Wow. And we know that in this country, there's been big question marks over... Like exactly. So, so we have to take into consideration that that system works particularly well, or doesn't perhaps work particularly well, but it works. It is, it is able to work because um, all, the, all the citizens have an identity card. The problem with the system um, for e-voting in Estonia and, and people who have sort of monitored this would suggest that, um, yes, there are a number of vulnerabilities, what are sort of called sort of vectors, where it is possible for hackers to hack into um, either the machines that are used for voting or at other stages where the votes are compiled um, and for different sort of, you know, for malware to be used and other sort of malicious attacks. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the technology is there, but it's, it's sort of still seen as, as kind of, slightly problematic and not necessarily improving upon the, uh, the, what, what we sort of have at present. So in the next, say, five or ten years, do you think there's, well, the technology might be there, do you think that we'll move down that road or do you think people actually like the pencil and Across. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, uh, I don't I know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Spoiling your ballot paper. Yeah, well, quite. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe we are traditionalists in this in this country, and we, we you know, we, we, we do sort of like the idea of, of some sort of a broken pencil in, in a polling booth <laughs> that, we, that we have to sort of try and scratch out across yes. uh, with on the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have to. You know, we live in a in a highly um, sort of technological society. You know, the, the sort of the pace of change in in, in these in pretty much all walks of life is, is very rapid. Um, so, and we already know that there's, there's a great lot of uh, interest in uh, sort of digital solutions, I suppose, is, yeah. is one way of putting this, um, for lots of uh, sort of things. And voting is, is going to be one of these. Um, I mean, there were e sort of uh, voting trials in this country in the UK in 2007. They didn't go very well. Um, so that's why we really haven't seen very much of that since. My suggestion and where I'm coming at in terms of my own research is, is to think about blockchain technology. Now, this is a technology which is, uh, has come sort of, you know, it started to make a name for itself, really, but it, it sort of came out of uh, what was um, Bitcoin technology. Uh, well, Bitcoin, which is, is a cryptocurrency, is... Um, and uh, blockchain um, is, is a peer-to-peer system. It's a, it's, it's a ledger which records data and fixes it at a particular moment in time. This was used for transactions in Bitcoin. So people knew that if a Bitcoin had been spent, mm-hmm. uh, then it couldn't be spent again. Blockchain has now kind of grown out of this and, and we're seeing it being used in lots of areas of provenance. So, you know, to be able to kind of say whether tuna has come from a particular place or whether a, a diamond is a blood diamond, um, for example. And whether that your vote is genuinely yours. Exactly. And so that's why you know, the technology uh, uh, performs a very fundamental process of fixing information right. at a point in time. Um, across a secure peer-to-peer network and we've seen that in all these different sort of areas of provenance and voting is now one where it looks like it could be of use as well. So I suppose the question for our students and and the wider public is that the technology is there 
we know that in talent shows at the moment, mm. you, know, you can vote in some kind of sophisticated way. It seems a bit old-fashioned in the general election. But how do you want to use the technology? Uh, how can we make the elections fair and efficient and exciting and inclusive, which I think is important? So final word to you, Rob. Yeah. I mean, I think I'll, I'll immediately pick up on, on this idea of exciting. I mean, whether, I mean this is, uh, you know, when, when we think about the way that technology intervenes in lots of areas of, of our life now, at least to think about banking, for example, mm -hmm. does banking need to be exciting? Does it need to be sexy? Does voting need to be exciting? Does it need to be sexy? Some people would say yes, other people would say no, there's something about it simply being a civic duty. It's something that we perform um, as part of our role as citizens. It's what makes us citizens. Um, so in that sense, it's a big question of uh, analog methods, they, you know, kind of, you know, are, are we as sort of humans um, failing in, in ways that technology really can make up um, for? Um, and the suggestion, I, I think, is, is that in some circumstances, certainly yes, in others, no. I don't think there is a blanket response um, that can well, be for achieved. For me, I think the, the crucial thing, and for this mm. series of conversations, mm. so thank you, Rob, is for the students to be thinking about how do we create a just society. Thank you very much, Robert Herring.